one. Welcome back, South Philly Sauce and Odyssey Original, brought to you by 94 WIP and Jack Daniels. Ashlyn now here with you after Flyers practice. We just heard from John Tortorella back here. We were in the Flyers locker room as the Flyers have four games left in the regular season and still a lot to be determined if there is going to be more. Since the last time we have recorded this episode, things have gone from bad to worse. Al, after a loss in Columbus, one of the worst, if not the worst loss of the season, um, things are not good right now. <laughs> There's no, no other way to put it. No, it's funny because when we were doing our post game and I was trying to I try to be light as possible and I said, well, I mean, technically they're not scoring and they're not stopping, stopping the puck. And that's basically, yeah. well, that's what it amounts to. It's nothing... Uh, is nothing further than that. It, it's a bad time to to have a, um, a scoring drought mm -hmm. and co combined with goaltending that is not as good as it had been through most of this season. Right. Uh, so I mean that's where you're at, and there's a lot of pressure on the team. It's a it's a it's a really weird spot to be in as an organization and as a team. Like the, nobody expected this beginning of the year, but it doesn't matter. You're here. Mm -hmm. You are where your skates are, so to speak. You're you're right here. And now it's like, okay, the goaltending, we, we need we need the kind that we had before. They're not getting that, yeah. and they're not scoring goals to make up for it. It's a, it's a horrible combination of things right now. However, that game in Columbus on Saturday was really, from the get-go, mm. was uh, subpar. Uh, yes. <laughs> and it was the one you really looked at and said, wow, that's not like them at all. Mm -hmm. now, you know, you've heard national uh, commentators commentating on – how hard they play. This is this is unbelievable what they're doing. And this one, they they just didn't do it. Yeah. It was a it was from the beginning. And I think Ashton, I think some of it was the fact, and this is gonna sound dumb, but do not get a power play early in the game. Mm -hmm. Because when you got a four minute power play early in the game and this thing has been awful. So bad. Um, I, I think it really drained a lot of optimism. The fact that they couldn't they can't score, even score on, on that. a four-minute power play right. against their team with ten regulars or ten players out of their lineup—that's mm -hmm. one of the worst, if not the one of the worst teams in the NHL. Yeah, and they couldn't. And I really think that Deflated that just them. started everything yeah. going back. No, I could so yeah. see that, and it does sound silly to say, "Well, just don't get a power play because <laughs> it's gonna or take a penalty when they get one." I know it's literally in it's, the game. It's that bad. It has gotten to that point. We were just talking to Scott Lott in the locker room, and he was telling me. Because post game he was fantastic after Columbus, very honest, very yeah, yeah. raw, um, and he said that there's zero excuse how flat they came out against Columbus. But that's really the only game that's happened. And I was asking Lawton, okay, what do you do now? Because you're one of these veteran presences. He was very putting the responsibility on himself after Columbus, and he said we've had all the player meetings, we've done everything we possibly can do to fix this, and now it's the point where you just go out and play and you just see what happens. There's no other answers. No, there isn't. It's uh, it's as simple as that. You go out and hope the goaltender has a strong game, mm -hmm. and you hope that uh, Konechny refines his scoring touch. He's really struggled, and yeah. you can tell he wears that on him. He wears that on his shoulders. Big time. Um, and he, he gets frustrated with his game. You know, Atkinson had a breakaway, didn't score. I mean, you wonder what's left in the tank there. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot Tippett. Of, you know, Tippett, Faraby gets in front gets knocked down and you know his effort mm -hmm. um, but just no finish and <laughs> boy i hate bringing everything back to a power play but if you look at this team and the the, the expectations and why the expectations weren't that high it was because they don't have that skill level the finish level they get lots of shots but they don't have that skill level the the pretty play level power plays the best almost all of them are always predicated on pretty plays, yeah. seam passes, not coming into the zone as a line mm -hmm. uh, and, and setting up and getting the puck through. And they don't seem to have that. And you know, we call it tic-tac-toe. Well, you can't have tic-tac-toe if you can't get the tack. And, and basically- You can't even get the tick. Yeah, get in the zone. <laughs> and it's like that and that I think is what's, what's showing up right now. Yeah. Uh, and, and you really have to work for it. I mean, imagine you, you play a, a game and you get, 30 good looks and you can't score and the other team gets two and one goes in. Right. That's where they're at right now. To me, when you try to make sense of this, and that's what we're trying to do here. That's what everyone is trying to do here. It's what we're trying to do on our shows. It's what the players are trying to do in the locker room. No one really has a solid answer of what the heck just happened these past three weeks. The only thing I can come back to is something we've been talking about all season long that finally caught up to them, which we hope would never catch up to them, which this talent, this roster, 
really isn't up to the speed of the teams you'd like to see. And we knew at some point this would probably catch up where the gas would just run out. Yeah. And it seems to have run out. It has. And and no small part, you know, they trade Walker at yeah. the deadline and brutal injuries. They'll do this ten they'll do this they would have done it over and over again despite this because they're looking to the future. Right. Well, for a long time they ran on two rails. What's gonna happen right now and what's gonna happen in the future? Well, then when they make that Walker trade, they touch the third rail and mm -hmm. things blew up. Yeah. And that's that's some of what what's gone on here. Mm -hmm. But uh, but a lot of it is and you see what's happened now in this league, teams will win five in a row. And then even the really good team, Nashville couldn't do anything. All of a sudden they go on a roll. A Washington got on, got hot and wasn't on a roll. Yep. And now it's a flyer. It's a bad time. Really bad but, time. But you know, I've saved the very worst teams in the league. There's going to be times in a year where every, almost every team looks like, wow, the best team in the league. And that same team is going to look like the worst team in the league. Yep. Well, this is the best, the worst time to look like maybe one of the worst teams in the league. It's terrible timing. So you have that situation. You also, John Tortorella was great in his press conference to be honest about the goaltending situation, saying you can't put blame on anybody. They have thrown Sam Harrison into a impossible situation with the Carter Hart situation. And they Schwartz was saying he was penciled in to play 18 to 20 games this year. And now look at him. And, Sam is never going to say he's tired, but in towards his opinion, he's spent. Yeah, maybe mentally um, mm -hmm. um, tired or, and, you know, maybe that's some of it. But he did also mention that they kind of were trying to, you know, who knew what was going to happen with that heart situation, that they knew something might might happen here. What's plan B? Yeah. And he's, you know, he's turned, he was a hell. Listen, I, I would. I would vote for him as one of the three most valuable players on the team this year. 100%. I mean, you know, you look at what he gave him early when, when everything kind of went. He's the reason we're here talking about this. Team. Yeah. I mean, he, you know, he's really played really well. Um, but this was not in the cards that he was going to have all this. And I still, I still wouldn't discount him rediscovering some of that for this very short term four games that are mm -hmm. coming up. But they, they have to have any other goal for Dota. I, I don't even know how to. I've never seen him. I mean, I don't even know how to, how do I, how do you break down the game of somebody that you really know? So barely seen. Yeah. Most of us just saw him a little bit in the Olympics mm -hmm. and that's it. And just to get, get used to everything, everything he's been through to, to throw him in. I mean, there's a deep end and there's getting thrown in the Arctic ocean. Yeah. Basically he's that's there. what, that's what happened. And based off towards how he's talking, if I had to guess, I'm going to think they're going to play Sam Harris in these final four games. It's his yeah. team. They're going to give him the shot to pull himself out of this and see what happens. Yeah. I mean, you asked me um, on on the air, on TV, about Harrison and I said, who's going to be the goalie? And I said, well, it's got to be Harrison. I mean, that's your whole future right now. Yeah. I mean, if it isn't, you're really, you're done. Well, and, yeah, now you're screwing with the future and yeah. with your, the confidence in his head of, am I the guy, am I not the yeah. guy, make a commitment. If you're going to commit yeah. to this guy, which Torts basically just did, did. then yeah. play him. Yep. So, I mean, we'll see. I mean, he's to me, he's mentally never been a goalie, <laughs> even even in seventh grade hockey, <laughs> even street hockey. I'm like, no, I'm not interested in that be because because if, if you give up one – the pressure on on a lot of players you go later in the game and okay here's this pressure to come in we've got to score connect you got to score got to get it even but a goaltender in, in situations like this it's from when the puck drops mm -hmm. because if you get behind it's like here we go again and that's what i think he's uh, when people say there's mentally grueling that's the matter or or you, you you give up two and all of a sudden you're going to the third period. If I give up another one, we're really done. I have to be it's perfect. A, it's, yeah. yeah. And I think that's where the mentally crueling part comes in. No, you can so see it and credit to him for hanging in this season in an impossible situation. And the whole grand scheme of things, we were talking to Travis Konechny and Travis Sanheim, the Travi. The Travi. And the locker room as well. And the whole grand scheme of this whole podcast is even with everything wrong that we just talked about for 10 minutes, they're still in this thing. Somehow, some way, they are scientifically – Still in mathematically, scientifically. Math, that's yeah. same thing. Yeah, it's that there's science, they're mathematic, scientifically, there, there's going to be an eclipse. So, <laughs> mathematically, <laughs> mathematically, it's hard to it's hard to play yourself out of this because of the teams behind them, what's gone on. Mm -hmm. So, although that looks grim, Washington, Pittsburgh schedule is really difficult. Yeah, um, Washington's really cooled off. It may go down on the final weekend. I mean, it's it's everybody thinks they've got a chance and every fan base is nervous that they're going to get not going to win. <laughs> every fan base is worried. They're not going to win another game all year Yeah, and hoping they win every one of their games all day. It can't happen, 
because people play each other. Ironically, the Flyers playing Montreal. Montreal has three games against these teams. And they and could play they, spoiler and all. They them. could play a major part in which teams get into these playoffs. And the Rangers, too. Yeah. And and you wonder, okay, you look ahead in the schedule and you go, oh, my God, the Rangers, the Bruins. Well, their positions might be fixed. And they may actually may be resting players at the end of it. So mm -hmm. it's senseless to go through this and try to predict. There's no predicting anything. It's as soon as the puck drops, it's a 50-50 proposition. You can't predict anything, but I will say a couple weeks ago, probably three weeks ago, we started looking at this last game of the season, which is the Flyers and Capitals <laughs> at the Wells Fargo Center. And we all started saying that game is going to decide the playoffs. And now that is looking to be so true without the aspect of we did not think the pain would be alive yeah. at this point. But every team is looking at the last game of the season saying this could be the game. Yeah. And it could. Mm -hmm. That's And for the league, it's it's – Terrific. Perfect. It's terrific. We're going down to the final the final straw here in the East, and we're going to have no idea till the last game, whether it's Detroit, whether it's Washington. So the Flyers, all everybody's upset. This isn't like the Eagles falling apart. Like no, the with Eagles the expectations. Are supposed to this is a team that just gr grinded it out all year. And I think the general feeling isn't like that. I think it's like, it's like what a crime. That this happened, not what it's a disgrace. unfortunate. Yeah, yeah. It's, with, it's that disappointing. This yes. it's not yes. maddening like yeah. the Eagles was. Just ask the radio yeah. callers that call us. <laughs> and that is South Philly Sauce, not as the original. Brought to you by ninety four WIP and Jack Daniels. We will see you later on this week.